Welcome to Dream Chaser Radio. Welcome back to another edition of the world famous Dream Chaser Show. I'm your host, Will Lane. And if this is your first time tuning in, the Dream Chaser Show is motivational conversation for regular people doing big things. So if you're a regular person and you're about big things, you're in the right place. Just getting back from Philadelphia. I was up there for my mother's birthday. Shout out to moms. Happy birthday, mom. I was up there celebrating her 65th birthday. So we had a real nice dinner party for at a spot called Relish up there. Real good restaurant if you've never been. If you're in Philadelphia, check out Relish on Ogons Avenue. But it's a real good time. You know, the vibe is love, family, friends. It's always nice, you know, catching up, you know, with everybody being so busy. A lot of times family doesn't get an opportunity to get together like we used to back in the day. So it's always good seeing everybody. But I tell you what, it was cold up there, man. I was going back to the airport. It's like 4.30. I caught a 6 a.m. flight back to Atlanta. It was like 4.30 in the morning. It was like 14 degrees. 14 degrees. It's unacceptable. So it's good to be back in Atlanta. Don't get me wrong. Atlanta gets cold, too. But I think I've gotten spoiled being down here for the last eight years. You know, it can get into your 20s and your 30s, but it never really stays there for a long period of time. So... It gets cold enough so that you can wear your boots and your, you know, your sweaters and throw your jacket on, but never to the point where you got to invest in coats made out of animals and scullies and all that nonsense. But look, check it out. Today I got five ways for you to take your life to the next level. Five ways to take your life to the next level. Number one. Number one is get curious. Get curious about life. You know, it's easy for a lot of us, and we're all guilty of this in one way or another. You know, every now and then we fall into these comfort zones, whether it's you stay in a relationship a little too long, it doesn't work. But, you know, you know her, she knows you. It's kind of safe, right? You know what to expect. It's comfortable. Or maybe it's, it's that job you can't stand waking up and going to every morning. But you know the you know the boss is a jerk. Cool with the co-workers. You don't know what it might be if you went somewhere else. So it's comfortable. You know? But every time you get comfortable, you really you really kill off a part of yourself that that is what's all what life is all about. Helen Keller has a real good quote. It's one of my favorite quotes. And the quote is, security is mostly a superstition. It doesn't exist in nature, nor do the children of man as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure to it. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. That's one of my favorite quotes right there. And you know, basically what she's saying, there really is no such thing as security. And there's no such thing as security because life is constant change. Life is constantly changing. Even when you think you're in this comfort zone or you're trying to create this bubble for yourself, things are still moving and changing around you. You know, you're getting older, you know, the the seasons are changing. You know, everything is, is, is constantly changing. So there's no such thing as safety. There's no such thing as security. At any given point in time, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Whether you know it or not, you might not know it, but you're either getting better or worse. And generally, if you feel like you're in some form of, if you're too comfortable in a situation, generally you're getting worse. Because when you're growing, Generally, you're in an uncomfortable space, generally speaking. And one way you can determine whether or not you're in a comfort zone is if you know what tomorrow is going to look like. And you know what Wednesday is going to look like. And you know what's going to happen on Thursday. If your life is too predictable, generally you're in a comfort zone. 
And you ain't doing nothing but getting old. And you know what? This is why I respect entrepreneurs so much. Because they're usually comfortable with change. They're usually comfortable with the ups and downs that come along with entrepreneurship. They've learned to embrace that, that uncertainty. You know, employees, on the other hand, career employees, they like knowing when that next check is coming in. They like knowing what Friday is going to look like and what two weeks down the road is going to look like. And if you think about it, that's really not living. That's really what life is about. I don't think that's what we were put here to do. I think we were put here to, to have the adventure, to have the thrill, you know, to, to face challenges. So instead of looking for a place to be safe, get curious. Get curious about what's coming next. If you don't get curious, you'll never change. And in order to have change, you gotta become curious. The change you want anyway. You're gonna change whether you like it or not, but if it's the change you want, you gotta get curious. So number one, get curious. Number two, ask yourself good questions. And I think I've talked about this in, in previous shows. I've said before that the quality of your life follows the quality of your conversation and the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. There's a good book called Psycho-Cybernetics, and if you haven't never read it, I suggest, highly recommend that you go and pick it up. It's by Dr. Maxwell Marks, Psycho-Cybernetics. And in the book, it basically says that the brain is a goal-seeking machine. If you give it a goal, it's programmed with or without your help to basically find, find that goal, seek out that goal, accomplish that goal. And if you ask yourself a question, make it a habit of asking questions, it'll basically find the answer for you on autopilot. But here's the catch. If you give it bad questions, it's gonna come back with bad answers. It's gonna come back with negative information. But if you ask the right questions, it's gonna find a way to get you the right answers. For example, one question that I constantly ask myself is why in the world is the Dream Chaser show the hottest podcast on the internet right now? And you know, I'm not going to stop asking myself that question until that's a reality. So I, I've learned to ask good questions over the years. And if you want to take your life to the next level, here go three of the here go three of the most powerful questions you can ever ask yourself. Write this down: three of the most powerful questions you can ever ask yourself. Number one is what worked. What worked about something you tried? Number two is what didn't work. What didn't work? What went wrong? What can I learn from this? And number three, what do I need to change going forward? If you can get in the habit of constantly asking yourself those three questions, you're going to win. So number two, ask good questions. Number three, use your environment. I've also spoken about this as well briefly in, in other podcast shows and I actually got hit to this about two or three years ago like using your environment so much of what I did or, or what I always tried to do was was really awful just just sheer will you know just gutting it out and that's cool and it, it works for a little bit but the problem with that is after a period of time you burn out you burn out it's hard to like just stay in the grind day in day out day in day out the way you overcome that is by setting up your environment for you to win you know whether it may be having your desk cleaned off when you come into the office in the morning maybe keeping some posters up with, you know some motivational things that motivate you in the environment or maybe maybe it's hanging around with people that inspire you have a positive influence to you talk positively to you tell you how great you are you know all these things are, are setting up your environment for you to win and you know that's one of my biggest challenges 
with uh, Bill Cosby. And I like Bill Cosby a lot. I know he's he's received a lot of criticism, you know, over the last couple of years with him being so outspoken on the situation in black neighborhoods. And I respect him again because he actually, you know, he came up rich down projects in Philadelphia. So, I mean, he's he's seen poverty firsthand. He, you know, he knows the situation. So it's not like somebody who's entirely talking from the outside, you know, looking in. But when you're in an environment which is not conducive to your growth, it's extremely, extremely difficult to go against the grain and create success for yourself. Because as human beings, we mostly we mostly operate based on our environment. So if your environment is largely negative, what you take in is, is pretty much all you can put out. Now don't get me wrong, it's people that, you know, come out of bad situations, but it's generally when people do that, it's generally something that is present, you know, either in them or in their environment, which gives them a, an advantage maybe over, you know, other people that are in that environment. You know, if you're in a poor neighborhood, but you grow up with a, with a mother and a father, that's a huge advantage against the guy across the street. You know, all he has is his mother raising him. You know, she's working two or three jobs to support, support the family, and she's never home. And it's not a, a black thing. It's not a Latino thing. You know, it's science. You know, pretty people are only going to put out what they take in, what they see. You know, we're all products of our environment in, in one form, you know, or another. So if you want to change, you must submerge yourself in an environment where what you want to experience, where you want to go is already taking place. And how do you do that? You do that by reading reading books by successful people, listening to positive audio, you know, listen to the Dream Chaser show, you know, talk to people that are doing what you want to do, can inspire you, can influence you in a positive way. And then get a coach, get a coach. A lot of people sleep on coaches. Coaches are good because coaches will help you expose a lot of the blind spots and your behavior that you can't see. We all have blind spots that we can't see. You know, it's really hard to see a picture when you're inside of the frame. So a good coach will always help you see your blind spots, see you, you know, help you understand where you're weak at. You know, how how you might be influencing your situations in a negative way or in a way that's, you know, not really conducive to your success. So get a good coach. So I don't know, I'm getting off a little bit on a tangent about that, but my point is Set up your environment to win. Set up your environment for you to win. Number four. Number four, find your optimum time of day. Find your peak performing hour of the day or hours of the day. You know, we all had 10 to 15 hours per week where we operate at like really a heightened state of performance. And for some of us, that might be in the morning. For some of us, it might be, you know, late night if you're a night owl. But and you usually get it for like an hour or two every day. And it's usually around at the same time. And it, you, you're just getting a, a state of flow where things are a little bit easier. You know, your, your swagger is that much tighter. Me personally, I find my flow state between 930 and 1130 every day. And what I do to take advantage is that is that I try to schedule my activities that are, are most critical, you know, to my day or to my week around that time. Whether it might be, you know, scheduling a meeting, an important meeting, or making phone calls, you know, or maybe I need to do some writing. You know, I try to schedule it around that time where I'm, I'm at my peak performance. And again, for me, it's like generally 930 to 1130 every day. So throughout your week, I'd encourage you to invest some time in it. Just like keeping an eye on your internal state and, and get a feel for when like you're really on your game and when you're really in the groove. And then go ahead and leverage that time to do whatever it is you need to do, whatever activity where you really need to do your best work with that activity, 
try and schedule your day around those peak times. So again, number four, finding your optimum time of the day. I say the best one for last. Number five is a big one. Number five, master your emotional intelligence. Master your emotional intelligence. It's a guy by the name of Daniel Goldman who came out with a book several years ago. It was a while ago called Emotional Intelligence. And in this book, he talked about how throughout history and traditionally that people always thought that the highest performing members of society, the people that made the most money, the people that became the most successful, there was this idea that they were smarter than everybody else. You know, they had the highest IQs and they were born with this ability that that just wasn't available to normal people. And in the book, he talked about how the highest performers aren't necessarily the smartest. In fact, they're usually not. But what makes them be able to perform at a high level and create success is their ability to deal with stress for long periods of time. Their ability to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So it has nothing to do with intelligence. It's just a matter of how long can you stay uncomfortable? How long can you stick with the problem until you get the job done? And if you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, if you look at the traditional highest paid professions, you know, your doctor. Doctor goes to school for 10 plus years. Your lawyers, you know, you got to go to school for four years. Then you still got to go to law school afterwards. You know, it's really just a matter of just staying focused in the game for long periods of time. On the flip side, we'll take a look at what we'll call average people or people with low emotional intelligence. When the challenge starts to increase or when things get difficult, they check out. And when they check out, they go to things like sex, Maybe they get tired, want to go to sleep. Food. It's time to go check on the refrigerator for the third time tonight. Or maybe it's alcohol. And I even got to be aware of this with myself. You know, when I'm working on something, and, you know, things are starting to get a little intense. At what point do I have to get up and go to the bathroom? Or do I get thirsty and have a need to break that tension? That's the time when I need to stay with the problem, you know, whatever whatever I'm working on, and just dig in. Something to think about. Number five, master your emotional intelligence. That's all my time, folks. Don't forget to check out the blog, dreamchasershow.com. Hopefully you learned something or remember something you forgot. Either way, my job is done. Peace.